Hello and thank you for watching this video. Please don't forget to like, share and comment on the video as well as subscribe to Good Better Best online videos for more video content. Hi everybody and thank you for joining us today. Today we are going to be working through a functions question. It's an exam type question but before we, be we begin I'd like to thank South Peninsula High School for allowing us to use their question papers. Let's look at 7.1. Yeah, um, or let's first read question 7. It says the following sketch shows the graph of fx is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c and gx is equal to dx plus e. c is the turning point of f. The points of intersection of F and G are H and A. The first question shows, says, show that A is equal to negative 2, B is equal to negative 4, and C is equal to 30. So we know that the equation of a parabola is um, AX squared plus BX plus C, and we have the roots. So what are we going to do? We are going to substitute the two roots. We have a x minus minus 5 and x minus 3. Those are the two roots. That gives us a times x plus 5, x minus 3. What do we do now? We look for another point on the parabola. What point do we see? You should see the y-intercept. The y-intercept is 0 and 30. And that's what we are going to substitute for x and for y. So 30 is equal to a, 0 plus 5 times 0 minus 3, and that gives me 30 is equal to a times 5 times negative 3, and that gives me negative 15a is equal to 30. We solve for a, and we see that a is equal to negative 2. What do we do with that information? We substitute it into the equation for a. And what does this give us? It gives us negative 2 times x plus 5, x minus 3. Multiply out, and what does that give us now? It gives us negative 2x squared minus 4x plus 30. This means that a will be equal to negative 2, b is equal to negative 4, and c will be equal to 30. 7.2 asks us to determine the, well, they don't ask us to determine the equation of the straight line, but they ask us to solve for D and E, which we know forms part of the straight line graph. So how do we determine D? D is the gradient. And we know that we can determine the gradient by using the formula the change in Y over the change in X or Y2 minus Y1 over x2 minus x1. Now we are given the x-intercept and we are given the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is 10, the x-intercept is negative 5, take into consideration that this is a positive graph. So we aren't going to take the negative into consideration. So what we do is we say 10 divided by 5 and that will give me 2. If you were to substitute the actual points, which is 0 and 30, and negative 5 and 0, you'll get exactly the same answer. So once we substitute and we see that our D value is equal to 2, our E value we can take from our graph and we see that our E value is 10. So we've now solved for 7.2. 7.3 says that we need to determine the coordinates of C. How are we going to determine the coordinates of C? Now, C is the turning point. Now, we can use the formula axis of symmetry, which is negative B over 2A, or you can use the midpoint formula to determine the x-intercept of the turning point. So here we add our two x-intercepts, which is negative 5 plus 3, divided by 2, and that gives me an x-turning point value of negative 1. 
What do we do with that information? We substitute that into our original equation to find the y value of the turning point. And here we go ahead, we substitute the negative one and we see that our y value of the turning point is 32, giving us a turning point value of negative one and 32. 7.4 asks us to determine the length of CJ if CJ is parallel to the y-axis. Now why is this information important? The fact that it is parallel to the y-axis. The reason it's important it be, it's because it means that that negative 1 x value carries all the way down to J. So J will be negative 1 and y. Now in the previous question we had to work out, sorry it was 7.2, we had to work out the value of d and the value of e. And if we substitute it we can see that the straight line formula is gx is equal to 2x plus 10. What we can do is substitute that negative 1 into the equation to solve for the y value and we see that j is negative 1 and 8 and what we can do because it's a straight line which is parallel to the y axis what we can do is we can sub we can subtract the y values and this gives me 24 units alternatively you can use your distance formula your answer will be exactly the same Let's look at 7.5. 7.5 says if P of X is equal to negative F of X plus 5, determine the turning point of P. So what we see here, you'll see that we have a negative FX. What does this mean? This means that we have a deflection across the X axis. Why do we know that? Because we can see that Y has changed. So that means that we have negative y is equal to negative 2x squared minus 4x plus 30 plus 5. What is this? That's the equation of px and because they've added 5 we also need to add 5. So that gives us negative y is equal to negative 2x squared minus 4x plus 35. When you divide by negative 1 you get 2x squared plus 4x minus 35. Why do we divide by negative 1? Well, we need to solve for the equation and we can't solve for negative y. We always solve for a positive y um, when it comes to functions. So what do we do now? We are able to determine the x value of the turning point by using the formula negative b over 2a. And what does that give me? It gives me negative 1. What do we do with that information? We substitute it into the original equation, which is this equation that we've determined here now, and we see that our y value is negative 37. That gives me a turning point value of negative 1 and negative 37. Now let's look at 7.6.1. Determine the values of x for which fx is less than or equal to gx. The important thing here is to not overthink it. Look at the parabola and look at the straight line. They are asking you where the parabola is less than the straight line. Let's look at our intercepts. We've got negative 5. That's where they intersect. And the other one is our h value, which they've said the x value is 2. Where is the parabola less than the straight line? It's less than the straight line to the left of negative 5 and to the right of 2. So if we have a look at this, 
look at the straight line and look at the parabola. Do you see that the parabola is below the straight line for all va values of x less than 5? And if you look at this, do you see that the parabola is below the straight line for all values of x greater than or equal to 2? Well, this gives you your answer. x is going to be less than or equal to negative 5 or x is going to be greater than 2. Okay, let's look at 7.6.2. What is the question? Where is fx divided by gx greater than 0? So whenever I'm faced with questions like this, I like to divide my graph into sections. So I'm going to divide it into 1, 2, and to the right of 3 will be the third section. So we need to take into consideration that to the left of negative 5. So for all values of x less than negative 5, my straight line is negative and my parabola is negative. So we see that a negative divided by a negative is a positive. Let's look at negative 5 to positive 3. We see that both graphs are positive, the parabola is positive and the straight line is positive. So a positive divided by a positive will give me a positive. But if we look at the value, um, the values of x greater than 3, we look at the straight line and we see that the straight line is positive but the parabola is negative and that will give me a negative. So this means they asked us we if x divided by gx would be greater than 0. If x divided by gx will be greater than 0, in other words, our answer will be positive. So it's positive where x is less than negative 5 and it's positive where x is greater than negative 5 and less than 3. This means that x has to be less than 3. So for all values to the left, less than 3, those are the values that will be included. So we can say that x will be less than 3. The last question deals with the nature of the roots. And it says, determine the values of k for which fx is equal to k as roots with the same sign. So, what do we do? We have fx is equal to negative 2x squared minus 4x plus 30. And we are going to make that equal to k. What we are going to do is take it over, take the k over to the left hand side. And this will become our new expression. What we need to do now is substitute into our discriminant or what we call delta. So delta is equal to b squared minus 4ac. We substitute negative 4 squared minus 4 times minus 2. And then our c value. Don't forget that your c value is everything that doesn't have an x, which is this entire expression here, 30 minus k. And we simplify and we get that. 16 plus 240 minus 8k. We're going to simplify that and we're going to say that 8k is equal to 256 and k is equal to 32. Now k is equal to 32 is that value that will make the expression equal to 0. So grade 11s, you know that there are two types of trinomials. One with a positive last term where both brackets carry the same sign as the middle term, whether it's positive or whether it's negative, both brackets are the same. But if the last term is negative, then we'll have one positive bracket and one negative bracket. So if k is equal to 0, if k is equal to 32, sorry, sorry then our answer will be 0. 
However, if k is greater than 32, then we'll have a positive last term for the trinomial, and therefore both brackets will carry the same sign as the middle term, and so our roots will then have the same sign. Thank you so much for watching with us. Please don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and we'll see you again next time.